today i'm going to preach on a particular verse and this verse is going to shed a lot of light it's going to bring about a lot of comfort joy peace and also it's going to purify our hearts minds our thoughts it's going to eradicate and terminate all our fears and all our self pities all the pain and all the agonies the world is full of pain satan causes pain there are demons that are there in this world that are causing pain in the hearts of the people so we live in a society a hurting society we live in a even our family members are sometimes very hurting even the ones who we love the ones who we think that they are with us when they backstab us when they speak bad or when they betray so the whole world is full of betrayal the whole world is full of offenses the whole world is full of hurts the whole world is filled with pain and agony if we could search your soul you will see in the subconscious and in the unconscious there is an underwater or a current or a layer there are layers that have been built on some people's life has been built only on pain it because it's paining for them when they see somebody prospering and when they don't see themselves prospering it pains them it hurts them so the hurt works as a driving force for them to succeed in life with all the effort they try to do many things and they sometimes prosper but again that prosperity is not from god it is from that pinning hurt or pinning pain that is deep down in them or for some people hurt push them into a competition they're trying to compete with people trying to prove that they are good because somebody has said something bad about them somebody has disapproved them so they are trying the level best to prove themselves and there is a big strive that's taking place hurt and pain has become a driving force for many people to succeed hurt and pain and become a driving force for some people to decline hurt and pain especially pain spirit of pain has become a driving force for some people to abstain or pain has become a driving force for some people even to change the character some have become introverts some have become extroverts so we see pain plays a very 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 wide role in shaping people's life in shaping history i would say rather so it's not about the end result but it is about the source probably you might have a very successful life probably you were achieved in life probably you have come to a better position or probably you have earned a name or probably earned a degree you have earned a good place or you earned the approval of men but what is the driving force behind it is it pain if it is pain i would say the old building the foundation is wrongly built that's why we see many hollywood actors and pop stars they build their career on pain because somebody has hurt them because they had been a failure they want to prove and this is where the enemy assists them to an extent where they deny god and uh, they try to follow the world this is where the world comes in the world comes in and says okay you have a pain in your heart and let me soothe it so that the world offers worldly pleasures the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life brings a false comfort so people are looking forward to something that could soothe the pain for some people it's success for some people it is approval of men so they will do anything that is in their means to receive the approval and that's how we have you know immoral people coming out good people are becoming immoral that's why men and women they go out of god's ways they go out of god's commands they go out of god's boundaries to just soothe their soul because they are not connected with god so pain plays a very very important role in people's life is your life built on pain and when there is a pain it begets rebellion when somebody hurts you you cry for some time and then you become very angry with them 
you feel very low because you have a low self esteem and that because they have spoken something bad about you it's hurting it's paining so much that you wanted to do something and that's where we miss god's will we run like a horse and we don't wait for the time of god we become hasty like a horse we run forward or we become like a mule we don't go with the timing or rather we stay back that's what the bible says do not be an ass or a mule because a ass runs faster and the mule is so lazy that it stays back so pain can bring in rejection which is compared to a mule and pain can give birth to rebellion which is again compared to a wild ass that goes wild let's take that words psalms 32:9 The Bible says, "Be not as a ass or as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in bits and bridle, lest they come near unto you." So either don't be on the rebellion or on the rejection side. You got to balance your life. So the old world is programmed. The old world trying to bring things out. Even histories are changing because of pain. Amen Amen you know was disregarded by Mordecai because it's Mordecai's culture that he should not bow down but he took it so personally he took it so seriously he really pained him so much that he planned for a complete destruction of the Jewish race so Satan uses pain in us to destroy other people a painful person will always inflict pain on others that's why especially spouses when they build their life on pain they would have built their education on pain they would have built their career on pain they would have built their uh, relationship on pain you might ask how oh, it is possible i'll give you an example for example a relationship because you had said something and somebody misunderstood and somebody you know spoke something about you so badly it is paining so much and you feel you're not accepted so what you would do is the spirit of pain will talk to you you know what the spirit of pain will say the next time don't do that because you need their acceptance you need their approval even if it is against your god even if it is against the word of god this pain will say compromise be a friend with this word so you will gain approval from your friends you will gain approval from your colleagues you will gain approval from your husband you will gain approval from your wife all you need is that and for the moment if you get that i think i am satisfied that's what the pain says rabala dura ka shaka mara these are demons that work in our secret chambers they write their suggestions in our thought and our imagination they paint our imaginations actually this pain in another way see the world says pain is gain but if a gain is built on pain that gain will come down at any time because your foundation is pain that's why successful people who have built their life on pain hollywood stars and the pop stars who build their life on pain finally end up not living their life to the fullest sometimes they commit suicide for no reasons sometimes people over drug themselves and they kill themselves some people are so depressed they get so discouraged mentally they get affected and finally they die so this is a kind of race that we run without our knowledge pain is controlling us pain is dictating us again i say it's not pain it's the demon that causes that pain is there it's a strong hold that exalts itself against the knowledge of god it is a strong hold that will allow you to compromise with the principles of god because the world is offering peace the world says come i am offering i have a peace offering and i will soothe all your pain that we could see in the prov 7th chapter here this woman is symbolizing the world there are two women that we see here in prov 7th chapter one is one woman is significant of wisdom another woman is significant of foolishness one woman is significant of holiness another woman significant of uncleanness one is of the spirit and one is of the world it's the woman I mean the word the 13th verse she says so she caught him kissed him with an impudent face and said unto him i have peace offering with me this day 
have I paid my vows or rather. And she says, therefore, I have come forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. I have found thee. The world is looking for innocent, foolish believers who are hurt, who are looking for some kind of a soothing or some kind of a false comfort. So the world says, I have come for you. I am looking forward for you. I have seen your face and I found thee. In the 16th verse, the world is offering a bed. And this bed is a bed of comfort, a bed of pleasure. According to the world, it's a bed of pleasure. So you can come and lay down and you can ease your pain, soothe your pain. 16th verse. I have decked my bed with the coverings of tapestry and with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed. It's a perfumed bed. It's a decked bed. It is a decorated bed. Decked in the sense of decorated bed. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes and cinnamon. 18th verse. Come, let us fill our love. Come, let us fill of love until morning. I will give you all the love that you need. I will soothe your pain. You compromise with me. This is the kind of bed that I am offering for you. This is the kind of comfort. This is the kind of joy. or It's a kind of pleasure that I am offering for you. And it goes on to say, let us solace ourselves with loves. Actually, it means let us enjoy. Let us soothe all your pain. This is a worldly bed that is laid and this bed, initially it is a decked bed or it's a decorated bed. Secondly, it's a perfumed bed. And finally, it becomes a death bed. That's the way the spirit of pain attracts. And the 23rd verse says, Till the dart strike his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare and knoweth not that is for his life. The Bible says, She hath cast down many wounded, yeah, strong men have been slain by her. A house is a way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Let not thine heart incline unto a ways, go not astray in a path. So we see how the world is trying to appease, how the world is trying to soothe or rather, how the world is trying to comfort, how the world is trying to tell you, this is the kind of relaxation that I offer. And the world is searching for us. The world is seeking our face. That's why the Bible says, Lord Jesus has said, If any man follows me, let him deny himself. Take up the cross and follow me daily. Denying the worldly pressures. Denying the comfort. Denying the soothing effect that the world gives. The eighth verse we see, there is a young man who is void of understanding. And he passing through the streets near a corner. And he went the way to a house in the twilight. It was dark. It was in the evening time. The sun was almost setting down. And the Bible says, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Ninth verse. What is this black and dark night? Black and dark night are days of adversities, days of pain, when we are afflicted, when we are going through issues in our life. It becomes a dark day for us. At those moments, the world comes with a better offer. So, how to deal with the spirit of pain? Saul was possessed by an evil spirit. You know why? Because he became jealous when the women of Israel sang praises to David and to Saul. And when they sang a song and they said, David has killed 10,000 and Saul 1,000. That, those wordings inflicted pain in him. He felt so bad being a king. He's supposed to be on the top, but when somebody is not praising, when somebody is not accepting, when somebody is not loving, when somebody is not approving what we desire, there was severe pain in his heart. And the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord departed from him and the evil spirit came and troubled him. Demons have an entrance into our life when we dwell on pain. Let's turn to Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verses 30 my lover is like a sachet of mirror lying between my breasts god says my lover here a bundle of mirror is well beloved unto me and he shall lie all night betwixt my breast when you talk about breast it is about your heart in between your breast is your heart what is mer mer is antiseptic antibacterial antifungal 
why does the bright says that my beloved has to lie all night what is night talking about night signifies this of trials and tribulations when things are all dark around you when you don't see light when everything seems going against you you don't know what is going to be your next step or you are confused about the next phase in your life that is night where you feel all your prayers are not going beyond your roof when you feel that all your time that you spend with the lord and all the words that you have all the knowledge that you receive from god is of no use and the lord jesus is compared to this merle merle is a substance it's a tear drop that comes out of a tree they collect it and they use it for preservation observation they preserve the dead bodies with the merle because from decomposition from bacterial infections we need to allow the lord jesus to dwell in our heart and he is our healer he is our peace he has broken down every wall he is a fortress and the prince of peace when he is lying down in the chamber of your heart whatever pain the enemy trying to inflict on you whatever that is happening around whatever fiery darts that have been sent to destroy your hope and your trust and your confidence in Christ will never prosper you know why only those people who say that i have my beloved resting between my breast which is between my heart and that's why jesus said let not your heart be troubled Don't be troubled. I am going, but I am going to come back. The world will not see me, but you will see me because I will come directly to your heart. God has to be in the middle. God cannot be elsewhere. You cannot keep Christ at your doorsteps. If Christ is at your doorsteps, you are very vulnerable to all the pain, hurts, fiery darts. Sometimes we saw that we need to rest in God. But here, the Lord Jesus is seeking for rest in you. which means god wants to dwell in you do you give him rest you know when no one left the birds out the first bird was raven it couldn't rest i mean it rested on dead bodies but the dove couldn't rest the dove cannot sit on dead bodies so it has to come back so it kept going and coming back kept going and coming back so the holy spirit of god needs to rest the lord is looking for rest in your soul if you could provide a place for him to rest he will take care of the rest of your problem zephaniah 3:17 says the lord thy god is in the midst of thee is mighty when you want to see god mighty in your life when you want to see the power of god resting in your life god has to be in the middle in the middle in the sense he has to be there in your heart and when he is there in your heart when he is there as a merle is when he is there he will save thee he will rejoice over thee with joy and he will rest in his love because he loves you and because you love him the only thing that could give him rest is our love towards him. we need to love him so much our first love many have forsaken the first love we need to love him with our first love give him all the attention give him all the glory and trying to submit to him and say lord i lay my crown at your feet i fall down and i say that i love you that's where the bible says he will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing sometimes the holy spirit sings deep down when he's resting how do you know the spirit of god is resting on you you will hear songs coming out from your heart even at times of trouble you will hear songs of salvation in the night time he will fill my mouth with laughter i will sing a song in the night david says he has put a song in my heart the songs of the, those are joyful songs that springs from an absolute rest that your soul when you allow the lord to rest in you i'm telling you you will be also resting you will also participate because it's the same table where god wants you to sit the previous verse we say that the king's table If the king is seated on the table he will also make you sit with him which means we are sharing in his rest the moment you say shallow they have to obey you because it is not you who is saying it it is the rest the lord is sleeping inside the lord is taking rest when jesus was resting in the boat 
when there were a lot of turbulence a raging storm and the disciples said we are going to perish the boat was filled with water and they were about to sink the lord rebuked them for their unbelief he stood up and said shalom you know when that happened when he was in a deep rest only people who are in a deep rest when they rise up and they say a word the mountains will depart only people who have experienced this deep rest when they rise up and say to the sycamore tree be the root and be the plant in the sea the impossible will happen only people who are rooted in this deep rest can exercise authority and power over the things that are around them every spirit of pain every spirit of negativity every demon that's working against you will flee you will see a miracle happening in all your circumstances you will see a miracle in your finances you will see a miracle in your situations you will see a miracle in your job you will see doors opening up so let's invite the holy spirit to rest in our heart and let's not disturb him let him rest let him sleep and if something is trying to disturb him all you got to do is to say the king is sleeping inside you better be careful don't ever try to disturb me i say in the mighty name of jesus calm down shalom quiet down immediately the situation will change be it pain be it diseases be it a circumstances adverse circ- anything it might be whatever it might be anything that will disturb my king's rest will be arrested in the name of jesus amen may god bless you all and uh, let these words find a place in your heart let be a great blessing in your life praise the lord to god be all the glory honor power and majesty